Hello everybody, yes, how are we all doing? It is the Fredders93 here and welcome back to another edition of Football with Fredders, the weekly football chat and discussion show here on the channel. I wish I was looking for a more positive topic to take a look at this week, but unfortunately, as a Newcastle fan, I just can't. I mean, I really just can't. <laughs> um, Steve Bruce, Mike Ashley, myself along with every other Newcastle fan in the world, have one clear message for you. Get out. That's not something I really wanted to say, but if you look at the last nine games, it needs to be said. So since, I mean, if you look, I mean, just look at our form. Like Since the West Brom victory, which, by the way, we only just Got. If things weren't embarrassing enough for Newcastle on that front, take a listen to the last nine games. Leeds 5, Newcastle 2. I watched that whole game, even when it was went to 3 or 4 2. But I was just embarrassed to watch the, that, that game. And that's not even the worst result. Newcastle 1, Fulham 1. How against ten men from a for well ten men for a half an hour and against a newly promoted side did we only just get a point because of a controversial VR ruling VAR ruling penalty. Do not even talk to me about the Carabao Cup exit to Brentford. Well Brentford's reserves I should say. We played a fairly strong team in that game and yet we still lost one nil of Brentford's reserves. I don't even care that we was away. Man City we started we started better. Better, but we still but we still lost. Granted, it was only 2 0, but against Man City you will very happily take that. Newcastle versus Liverpool the board draw, nil-nil, okay, so that's at least one point. Um, but that was probably one of our better performances, because I don't even know how we managed to get that point in the first place. Newcastle 1, Leicester 2. Yes, this is what ha this is what happens when a te team has proper investment and is properly looked after. This was one I'm talking about with, my, with Leicester City, of course. Why would I talk about Newcastle at this point? Um, Le Leicester have risen the ranks. They've even won the league in the last five years, for goodness sake. Then the extra time loss to Arsenal in the FA Cup. For the first 105 minutes, we did great. Then Carroll comes off and Dwight Gale comes on. And that's when the defend. The defence had their lapses in concentration. And then, and I said this about the Brentford game, but again, do not get me started on the Sheffield United game. I will look into that a bit more in a moment. But it looks like that we are the team that's handed them their only victory this season. And and we were the first team that gave, gave them a clean sheet. I mean, what the fuck is that all about? And then... Then Arsenal three, Newcastle nil. I didn't follow the whole, the whole game. I was, well, I didn't. Well, I say that I wasn't watching it. I was following it on Radio Five Live. But still, apparently it was defensive errors that cost us the game in that one. So that's been our last nine games. Two points from possible twenty-one, and out of both cup competition, both cup competitions. They keep, they keep saying they want to take the cup seriously. Clearly we don't. I mean, of course we don't. And then you take a look at some of our stats from some in-depth stats in terms of like in-game performances for this season. We are one of the lowest teams in terms of shots in games, shots on target, t chances created, touches in the opposition box, I mean, of course, we're going to be last in possession. We only ever seem to want to hit about 30% possession in, in, in every game. And in, in terms of 
having the most amount of shots faced and the most shots on target faced, I am not surprised that we are one of the worst worst for that in terms of like having the highest number. It's all down to how we set up. Five at the back, five, four, one, is a dinosaur formation. And why he keeps persisting with it, even though he's seen on multiple occasions that it hasn't worked, I just do not know. You bring in a good striker like Callum Wilson and you leave him isolated. Like, what the hell is that? People seem to... I mean, we yes, we played this sort of system under Rafa, but the difference between Rafa and Bruce is that for some reason, Bruce is actually given the money to spend, despite the fact that Rafa had the best intentions for the club in heart. He wanted, he saw this as a project. Let's take a look at one or two dealings from the Bruce era, which you can question as to why this is like why this footballing dinosaur is being given has been given the reins and it makes me wonder more as to why he was given the funds and Rafa wasn't. The first obvious point to start start with for that is Joe Linton. Club record forty million pounds I I'm very happy to give whoever was scouting Joe Linton when he was a Hoffenheim this pair of glasses because I do not know what you saw in Joe Linton to bring him to the club in the first place, let alone bring him in for £40 million. Not one, four, four, zero. And this was in like the first couple of weeks of Bruce being in charge. It had to take Raph, had to take Rafa Benitez like three years to be trusted with that any that any money of anything to do with that calibre. And that was for Miggy Almiron in the last six months of his tenure. Joe Linton has been tried as a striker. He's been tried tried as part of a front two. He's been tried sort of like just behind the main striker. He's been tried on the left wing. I honestly do not know what his best position is. I just don't. And then for the left back spot, in, instead of trying to go in again for Jetro Villains and tr after his injury, even in this window, and try or trying to go for someone else, he spends fifteen million pounds, which which is a fee that could rise to twenty million pounds on with certain add-ons. For a left back, twenty-two years of age, who had just finished bottom of the league with Norwich City, yes, he was one of the brightest sparks for that, um, for that team that season, but. Alarm bells should have started ringing at that at that point when even Liverpool didn't want to sign him as a backup for Andy Robertson and that we'd rather trust somebody else out of the back arse of Greece. And then last season, do not get me started on the loan deals for Danny Rose and Nabil Bentaleb. What exactly did they offer apart from more headaches every single time they went on the pitch? So simply, Bruce... Do us a favour. I know this is your dream job. I know that it's always going to be tough in the Premier League. But for the sake of yourself, for the, and for the sake of the sanity of the Newcastle fans, and for the sake of Newcastle's season, please just go. And Ashley as well, sell the, sell the club. The, the Saudi deal is not coming back. Look for someone else. So that's going to do it for this week on Football with Fedders. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll try and find something more happy to talk about next week. Uh, do leave that like. Subscribe if you're new. Follow the social medias. And I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye bye for now.